एक लाइव नहीं सर हरिओम हरिओम नमस्ते टू ऑल प्रोस्ट्रेटिंग एट द लोटस फीट ऑफ ब्रह्मनिष्ट श्रोत्रीय सद्गुरु स्वामी विराजेश्वर सरस्वती and the entire guru parampara on behalf of all of us today's discourse on viveka chudamani will continue om shri ganeshaya namaha om shri mahasarasvatyai namaha sada shiva samarambham shri shankaracharya madhyamam asmada acharya varyantam vande guru paramparam श्रुति स्मृति पुराणा करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंकर शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण पुत्र भाष्यकृद वंदे भगवत सर्वेदात सिद्धांत गोचर तम गोचर गोविंद परमानंदम सद्गुर प्रणदस्म ओं नमो भगवते वेराजेश्वराय Om. We had stopped at uh, shloka number four eighty two last time in the Viveka Chaturanga. Four eighty three onwards today's discourse will continue, which is mainly based on the Bhashya, the commentary given by. ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಚಂದ್ರಶೇಖರ ಭಾರತಿ ಮಹಾಸ್ವಾಮಿಗಳು ಶೃಂಗೇರಿ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ದಿ ಸೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕಸ್ ಆಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ನಾವು ದಿ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ಡ್ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಆತ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಹಿಂಸಲ್ he is pouring out in ecstasy his experiences of the enlightenment and what is actually happening after this enlightenment what is the nature or the state of his purest of the pure shuddha sattvic mind the mind is pouring out all in other words he is simply with the tears flowing ananda bash pass it is called tears of joy he is doling out giving out ex tempo this information about the enlightenment itself to the guru to the sadguru now always we have to remember one very subtle point here very subtle point it will be missed usually by many many guru bandhus many spiritual aspects you know out of their what we call what shall we what shall we call out of their a sort of a a fraction of a ignorant mind i can call now a question usually is asked that if you become enlightened if you become really realized now vedanta say all the mahatmans say all the jnani mahatma siddha purushas mahapurushas santa purusha they say that this experience is of transcendental nature it is beyond the mind the buddhi chitta and ahankara and you say that the upanishads watch for that the shruti vachanas are there the mind cannot reach the para brahma vastu the buddhi cannot reach param brahma vastu chitta cannot reach the speech cannot reach indriyas cannot reach sense organs cannot reach that supreme splendor what we call pure parama chaitanya or consciousness when that is a fact and shruti also says yato vacho nivartante aprapya anasasa 
So when once the transcendental, direct, personal perception of reality occurs, then how you can talk about that? The speech cannot even describe. And the speech cannot reach. Mind cannot reach. How can you talk about it? It is a very, we can call it as a question, not a question, it is a question, it is a sort of a doubt, a sort of a doubt. The point to remember here is when Mahatmans, when great Siddha Purusha, the Jnanis, when they speak about realization, like for example here, Sri Acharya Shankara Bhagavad is giving out these details in this Vivek Chudamani from the standpoint of view of the disciple who has enlightened himself by the grace of the Guru and he's explaining his experiences. How? We have to remember that self or Atman or the Parabrahma Vastu, Paramatma Vastu in the Nirakara, Nishpriya, Nirvikalpa state cannot speak at all. But it chooses the medium of a body. It chooses the medium of a physical body with the ability of the speech pattern to explain sometimes these intricate, very subtle, transcendental points so that they become the beacon for the mankind. They become the pointers to the other spiritual sadhakas, spiritual aspirants. So the self, the Atma, the Paramatma, Parabrahmavastu, whatever name we can use, chooses the body as the medium, the speech pattern of the body, physical body as a medium to express itself out of pure grace, out of pure compassion, with a total mercy and compassion and grace, the, the Atma Vastu explains about itself through the medium of the enlightened person. I hope this would be in the short, a smallest answer for the doubt. So, the disciple is pouring out the Paravak emanating from Nabi Chakra, Manipura, transformed itself into Madhyama and Pashyanti in the Kantha Pradesha, and then as a Vaikari from the mouth, it is coming out. So the Paravak in the finally, in the form of Vaikari, it is coming out, coming out. In the purest of the pure form from the purest of the pure mind. So the disciple was explaining about his Atmanubhava. All these shlokas explain the same thing. Atmajnana vanna hondidantaha, sakshatkara vanna padadantaha, atmajnana sampananada shishya, atana mukhara vidadinda guru vene yadurige, atmanubhava the varnane. So we had stopped at I had seen this world, this Jagat as a reality just now, and now it has vanished. We had stopped there. What I had seen all the time now, the Jagat, the Vishwa, the universe has vanished. What a wonder, wonder of wonder. I am really amazed. I am dazed, I could say. How to explain this? The world was there, and now the world is not there in front of me. Mahadadbutam, Asheradali Ashari, Elihoi to Ijagatu, Idurgana Nurtai Tala, Anabostai Tala, Nana Panchendri Gala, Anabok, Bertai Tala, Yvishwai, Jagatos, Tower, Jangama, 
ಈ ಪ್ರಪಂಚ ಈ ದ್ವೈತ ಸೃಷ್ಟಿ ಈ ವೈವಿಧ್ಯತೆ ಎಲ್ಲವೂ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಯಿತು ಎಲ್ಲಿ ನೋಡಿದ್ರು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನನಗೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಸ್ತುವೆ ಕಾಣ್ತಾ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಈ ಪ್ರಪಂಚವೇ ಕಾಣ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ವಲ್ಲ ಪ್ರಪಂಚ ಮಾಯ ಆಗಿದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಅಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಬಂದಿತ್ತು ಹೋದ್ಸಲ ಶಿಷ್ಯನ ಆತ್ಮಾನುಭವದ ವರ್ಣ ಬೈ ದಿ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಗುರು ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಡೈಗ್ರೆಷನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೋ ಕೋಯಿನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟಲ್ tomorrow happens to be as per our indian lunar calendar as per our lunar ca- calendar followed mainly in south india almost throughout the india tomorrow is what we call the shukla paksha of ashwayuza masa dhanatrayodashi third day of the waxing moon of the ashwayuza month third day shukla paksha third day ana trayodashi as it is called tomorrow in north india this is referred as dhanteras day here in our south india we call it as dhana trayodashi trayodashi third day and day after tomorrow is naraka chaturdashi or the deepavali as we call deepavali festival day festival of lights day after tomorrow naraka chaturdashi we simply call it as day of deepavali day of light of festival now on dhanatrayodashi day which falls tomorrow tomorrow that is in our english calendar tomorrow is 23rd october 2022 so on this dhantrayodashi day dhanteras day in 1972 in rishikesh our parama pujya reverential gurudeva realized attainment enlightenment occurred on that day on dhan trayodashi day dhan trayodashi and all those points are beautifully step by step they have been recorded in the autobiography scientists search for truth in the last chapter that is 18th chapter and our gurudeva after the enlightenment to reconfirm what experience he had personally profoundly directly the very next day he comes to his his guru our parama guru sri vidyananda saraswati he falls at his feet our gurudev falls at the feet of his guru and then narrates everything the experience direct experience the aprokshanabhuti he had the previous evening previous day and our parama guru tall years with smile with ecstasy with joy attentively listens to the exposition of our gurudev and he joyfully proclaims yes this is realization what you went through is nothing but pure realization of atman atma sakshatkara this is the true atma sakshatkara occur now you have become a brahma vid a brahma vid so out of sheer joy is guru confirms so that enlightenment day happened on dhanatrayodashi day that falls in, in this year tomorrow 23rd october 2022 very coincidentally if we calculate from the english calendar exactly it is 50 years before on 1972 on dhanatrayodashi day 50 years before the enlightenment occurred like a flash during the deep meditation in the nirvikalpa samadhi to our gurudev 
so that's why in the 18th chapter all these things are there so beautifully covered out of my sheer love towards my gurudev i would like to just read one or two small paragraph every word is so important in the 18th chapter so for my own benefit to quench my own satisfaction i am going to read a small one or two passages from the 18th chapter of scientist search for truth what our gurudev has written about the enlightened please listen these are the words of my gurudev in the book realization is perhaps the most enigmatic of all the experiences it is so simple and so easy after you had it in fact it is the easiest thing in the world nothing can be easier than this you feel silly that you did not know and feel stupid to have worked so hard for it but it was the hardest it was the hardest and the most difficult thing before you knew it that you had to give up everything and work so hard sacrificing everything for years nay for even many lives it is difficult not because of the intricacies not because of non proximity not because of non availability but merely because of some obstruction in your mind called avidya because you were under the spell of the maya for hundreds of lives and you always believed that the phenomenal world is real 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 one may fancy that believing is knowing not so one may listen from a preceptor from a sadguru from a teacher tatvamasi you are that tatvamasi thousand times and one may repeat aham brahmasmi i am that aham brahmasmi or soham one may repeat soham i am that a million times even then the realization will not come because listening and repetitions are always at the mental plane under the spell of maya one has to transcend the mind maya intellect ego and then reach the pure consciousness where the truth is realized therefore fancying a realization from the book knowledge or by mental understanding is a great folly and self deception it continues our gurudev and the small para beautiful para i am going to read that never did the question who am i strike so forcibly before and such a question if at all arose had an obvious and a, an immediate answer i am this body but now in a deep samadhi in the nirvikalpa state this answer could never arise and if it did it was wrong because there was no body at all the question who am i arose when the body that is all the three bodies the stula sharira plus linga sharira plus karana sharira put together who am i the question who am i arose when the body was dissolved in a domain beyond the three states that is the waking state dream state and deep sleep state in the innermost recesses of the real self and the infallible universal answer valid to all the three states and beyond has been granted by the 
divinity within divinity within so our gurudev like any other mahatman always he concludes or he makes it very clear that finally bestowing of this transcendental nature of real direct perception of self atma or paramatma vastu it all by the grace of divinity or god or ishvara himself ishvara anugrahitaya only by the grace only by the grace of the divinity it happens by itself at the final stage but to reach that all the efforts initially are required gurudevara ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಿಯ ಸತ್ಯಾನ್ವೇಷಣೆಯ ಪುಸ್ತಕದ ಹದಿನೆಂಟನೇ ಅಧ್ಯಾಯದ ಕೊನೆ ಭಾಗದಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರ ಆತ್ಮಾನುಭವದ ವರ್ಣನೆ ಏನು ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ರೂಪಾಂತರವನ್ನ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಒಂದೆರಡು ಪ್ಯಾರಾಗ್ರಾಫ್ ಈಗ ತಾನೇ ಓದ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಮಹಾತ್ಮರು ಹೇಳಿದ ಹಾಗೆ ಗುರುಗಳು ಅದನ್ನೇ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಯಾವುದು ನೂರಾರು ಹಿಂದಿನ ಜನ್ಮಗಳ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಬಲದಿಂದ ಸಾಧನಾ ಬಲದಿಂದ ಈ ಜನ್ಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಗುರು ಕೃಪೆಯಿಂದ ಮತ್ತು ಭಗವಂತನ ಕೃಪೆಯಿಂದ ಸಾಧನೆಯನ್ನ ಸಾಧನೆಯಿಂದ ಮುಂದುವರಿಸ್ತಾ ಮುಂದುವರಿಸ್ತಾ ನಿಶ್ಚಲವಾಗಿ ಮುನ್ನಡಿತಾ ಇದ್ರೆ ಗುರು ತೋರಿದ ದಾರಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ನಡೀತಾ ಇದ್ರೆ ಆ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮನ ಕೃಪೆಯಿಂದ ಎಂದಾದರೂ ಒಂದು ದಿವಸ ಮನಸ್ಸು ಪರಿಶುದ್ಧವಾದಾಗ ತಾನೇ ತಾನಾಗಿ ಆತ್ಮನ ಬೆಳಗು ನಿಶ್ಚಲವಾಗಿ ಬೆಳಗುತ್ತದೆ ಆತ್ಮ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ಕಾರವಾಗುತ್ತದೆ So let us now continue with the present shloka in the Viveka Shuramani. Kim heyam kim upadeyam kim anyat kim vilakshanam akhandananda piyusha purne brahma maharnave kim heyam kim upadeyam kim anyat kim vilakshanam akhandananda piyusha purne brahma maharnave ಶಿಷ್ಯ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾನೆ ಆನಂದ ಭರಿತವಾದ ಆ ಮನೋಸ್ಥಿತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದನೇ ತುಂಬಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಮನೋಸ್ಥಿತಿಯಿಂದ ವರ್ಣನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾನೆ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ತನ್ನ ಗುರುವಿನ ಎದುರಿಗೆ ಅಖಂಡವಾದಂತಹ ಆನಂದ ಅಮೃತದ ತುಂಬಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಈ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಎಂಬ ಮಹಾಸಾಗರದಲ್ಲಿ ನನ್ನ ಮನಸ್ಸು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದ ಎಂಬ ಮಹಾಸಾಗರವೇ ಆಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ಯಲ್ಲ ಈ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದ ಎಂತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಸಾಗರದಲ್ಲಿ ಬಿಡೋದು ಯಾವುದು ಯಾವುದನ್ನ ಬಿಡಬೇಕು ಯಾವುದನ್ನ ಗ್ರಹಿಸ್ಬೇಕು ಯಾವುದನ್ನ ತಗೊಳ್ಬೇಕು ಬೇರೆ ಯಾವುದನ್ನ ಹೊಂದಬೇಕು ವಿಜಾತಿಯ ಯಾವುದು ಬೇರೆ ಯಾವುದು ಸ್ವಂತ ಯಾವುದು ಇದು ಯಾವುದು ಗೊತ್ತಾಗೋದಿಲ್ವಲ್ಲ ಕಿಂ ಹೇಯಂ ಕಿಂ ಉಪಾಧೇಯಂ ಕಿಂ ಅನ್ಯ ಕಿಂ ವಿಲಕ್ಷಣ ಸೊ the disciple is explaining about himself to his guru he, this now this mind has become totally a huge ocean of brahmananda sagara ocean of bliss the bliss is overpouring overpouring wherever i see i see purnananda nijananda brahmananda only the bliss the highest the superior form of the bliss and in this state of mind the mind is so purified it is overflowing itself with the bliss of ananda brahmananda nijananda itself so then here what is to be discarded what is to be accepted what is distinct what is not distinct in this ocean of bliss wherever i imagine wherever i perceive wherever i see i see nothing but brahma padartha vod nothing but pure ananda pure brahmananda so what to leave what not to leave what to obtain what to get what to acquire what to give up i don't know i don't know it is a wonder next he continues nakinchidatra pashyami na shrunomi na vedmyaham 
स्वात्मनैव सदानंद रूपेणास्मि विलक्षण न किंचिदत्र पश्यामी न शुणोमी न वेद्यहम स्वात्मनैव सदानंद रूपेणास्मि विलक्षण सदानंद रूपेण विलक्षण अस्मी अहम ब्राह्मी स्थित विलक्षण परमानंद स्थित नोड़ताल ना ऐनू कलू अरियताल केवल आत्मरूपन विलक्षण केवल अखंड ऐक आत्मस्वरूपन एलू आत्मरूपदल नन केल नान नोड़ता नन गता ना अन्वस्ता सो ई डो नाट सी एनिथिंग हियर नार ई हियर एनिथिंग इन दिस प्यूर् इन दिस स्टेट आफ प्यूर् ब्लिस ई डोट नो एनिथिंग ई डोट ग्रास्प एनिथिंग I am simply abiding myself in the form of Atman, totally in this continuous enjoyment of bliss called the ocean of bliss, Brahmanand. I am totally immersed in this deep ocean of bliss. I have become vilakshana swaru. I am Vilakshana Mahaswami. Chandrasekhar Bharati Mahaswami writes here: Swatman neva sadananda rupena asmi Vilakshana. Sadananda rupena Vilakshana asmi. Vilakshana means Mahaswami writes here: Aham Vilakshana asmi sadananda rupena. What is this Vilakshana? Vilakshana means. I am beyond the five koshas or the five sheets, which either to earlier in the Viveka Choda Mani, Acharya Shankar Bhagavat Pada explained in detail. See the physical body and the mental body make up put together we call body mind complex. It comprises five koshas, five sheets, one within the other. The outermost is this physical body. This. physical body grass body this grass body the physical body this is called the outermost annamaya kosha inside this throughout in all the tissues and cells what is happening that vital breath full of energy the prana vital breath is overflowing traversing in million ways so that is pranamaya kosha so pranamaya kosha is just within the stoola sharir annamaya kosha and still subtler to that is manomaya kosha the mind the subtlest sixth organ we can the mind refers to the manomaya kosha then inside that there is buddhi intellect vijnanamaya kosha and around inside that you find anandamaya kosha ananda so that ananda there anandamaya kosha refers to as was told earlier in the beginning in detail it refers to your physical pleasures and joys of fleeting nature the physical in the waking world or in the dream world what you experience the pleasure and joy refers to ananda this ananda is fleeting it is not permanent it is not eternal it it happens like a flash and then vanishes you feel joyous you feel highly pleasured when pleasurable things are 
appear in front of you, you enjoy with great pleasure. You are relishing, enjoying pleasurable things with joy is that all constitute ananda. So that is ananda maya. So the Shishya says, I am vilakshana. I am beyond all these five koshas. I am not the physical body. I am not annamaya kosha. I am not this pranamaya kosha. I am not even this prana. Prana sanchyata. I am not even this mind which includes chitta also. I am not this buddhi. Vijnanamaya kosha. Buddhi also includes, please remember, ego. Aham. I am not even this physical ananda experienced in the waking life, in the waking duration of the life from birth to death. All when good things happen, the joy sprouts in. I am not even that. I am beyond this five kosha. Vilakshana means Pancha kosha tita is referred as Vilakshana. I am that Atma Suru. So that bliss cannot be compared. This Ananda is not even a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of that real bliss. And beyond. <coughs> Next. The Shishya prostrates again and again, pays his obeisance to the Guru with a folded hand. With a folded hand. Next shloka is a landmark shloka. In fact, we have to remember the next shloka given here in the Viveka Chudamani. This should be our daily prayer shloka or prarthana shloka towards our reverential Sadguru himself. Shishya says, Namo Namaste Guruve Mahatmane Vimukta Sangaya Saduttamaya Nitya Dvayanandara Saswarupine Umne Sada Apara Dayam Budhamne Namo Namaste Guruve Mahatmane Vimukta Sangaya Saduttamaya Nitya Dvayanandara Saswarupine Umne Sadhapara Dayam Budhamne. We have to remember this. This haim, this verse, this shloka, this applies to our Sadguru. Every spiritual, serious mumukshu, jinyasu, to remember this. This is the real. Obedience we are paying towards our Sadguru who has shown the way. He has pointed towards the reality. He has shown the door we have to walk. So, Namo Namaste Guruve Mahatmane Vimukta Sangaya Saduttamaya Shishya is praising. Shishya illi tanna guru vanna matte matte puna puna namaskara madata herta iddhane e Sadguru Mahatmanu, Sangarahitanu, Brahmajnyanigal, Sreshthanu, Adantaha, Nitya, Advaya, Ananda, Surupa, Sthane, Agirtakantaha, Uvave, Agirtakantaha, Aparavada, Daya, Samudrave, Agirtakantaha, He, Sadhguruve, Ninige, Ninige, Matte, Matte, Puna, Puna, Namaskara, Galo, Namaskara. Extolling the virtue of the Guru, Sadhguru, Shishya says, I, I once again bow down. I bow down all the time to you again and again because you are Vimukta Sangaya Saduttamai. You are Nitya Advaya Ananda Rasa Swarupine Bhumne Sadapara Dayam Bhudamne. You are the best among the Brahmajnanis. You are the embodiment of the bliss. So, I am again and again going down myself to such a great ocean of bliss, such a great ocean of mercy, who is always Sachidananda Swarupa, Nitya Advaya Ananda Swarupine. 
you are the Sat Swarupa, you are the Chit Swarupa, you are the real Ananda Swarupa. So I am bowing down and down again and again. I am prostrating to you again and again. Namo Namaste Guruve Mahatmane Vimukta Sangaya Tadottama. Since you are the sole reason, you are the benefactor. You are the reason for my enlightenment. Out of sheer grace, out of your glance, Guru Prasad, Guru Prasad, Guru Krupa, I could cross over the ocean. You showed the way and by your assistance, by your kind words, your glance, your Guru Kataksha, your Krupa, your Anugraha, I crossed over the ocean of samsara. I crossed over this bondage so that no more there is, I am caught up in the birth and death cycle of samsara. I have escaped. So here, you have to remember why they realized Shishya. In reality, there is absolutely no difference he is also realized. He is one with the reality. Just like his guru who is one with the reality. There is no difference at the Vedantic level. At the spiritual, highest spiritual level. The realized disciple Shishya is as good as the realized guru himself. Both are one. Both are one. But still the Shishya, the disciple goes down with all the reverence, with all bhakti, with all shraddha. He prostrates at the feet of his guru. Technically, it appears like there is a duality. See? Shishya, knowing himself, being a realized person, that I am that only, he bows down to the guru, who also is a realized person, who knows that I am that only. Both have transcended duality, but they exhibit, the Shisha exhibits duality in the worldly sense, in this Lautika sense. In the worldly sense, the Shisha exhibits a duality. He prostrates. Though he has become non-dual, he has reached the state of Advaita. There is no second, but still he practices Duality in front of the Guru, in front of the Sadguru, because elsewhere, the Shankara Bhagavad Pada, in his Tattvopadesha, he has mentioned this point very clear. Sri Shankara Bhagavad Pada, in his Tattvopadesha, has made this point very, very clear. <laughs> Bhavadvaitam sada kuryat, kriyadvaitam kadapi kutna kutrachit. Avadvaitam sada kuryat, priyadvaitam kadapi kutrachit. That means, Acharya has mentioned that. See, in your mind, in the mind, you should always practice advaita, non duality. There is only one vastu. You should always grasp, you should always remember. You should be always at that state of non-dual Parabrahma, Sthiti in the mind. But while practicing in the world, while living in the world, don't practice this Advaita as far as the world is concerned. Kava Advaitam Sada Kuryat Kriya Advaitam Na Kadapi Kutrachit So, in the living world, you should not practice Advaita. Again, this will take long, a lot of time to explain. I will stop it here. So, Acharya Shankara Bhagavad Pada himself says, Tasmat Trishulokesho Nadvaitam Guruna Saha. That is the point, Acharya. Tasmat Trishulokesho Nadvaitam Guruna Saha. So don't practice Advaita in front of your Sadguru, who is your benefactor, who is responsible for your upliftment in this life. 
So you understand Advaita Siddhi, but don't practice it in front of the Guru. Na Advaitam Guruna Saha. This is a statement given by Acharya himself elsewhere in the Tatvopadesh. So we have to remember this very clearly. The disciple continues. Yet Kataksha Shashisandra Chandrika Pata Dhota Bhavata Pajashamaha Raptavana Ahamakanda Vaibhavanandam Atma Padamaksha Yamkana Yet Kataksha Shashisandra Chandrika Pata Dhota Bhavata Pajashamaha Raptavan Ahamakanda Vaibhavanandam Atma Padamaksha Yamkana Shishya Matta Herta Itane. Hey Sadguru, Guru Varia. Yara Kadenota. Yara Kadegandina Nota. A Guru Kataksha Vikshana Idiella. Tama Kataksha Vikshana in the Sheetalavada Ratraya Chandrana Belako. On the Riti Ahlada on the Ritiali, Manasige, Nima, Kataksha Vikshane, Nima Kurunakumbi, the Kataksha, a nota dinda in an Bhavabandana, Samsara Kleshavana, Nano, Ograds Kundan Laguruve Tat Parina Mavagi, Nano, Ia Kandavadantaha, Vaibhavadantaha, Ananda Mayavadantaha. E. Parama Padavana, Akshana the Le, Tama Krupe in the Hondit Nalla Guru in the Santoshad in the Shishi Herthai. So the disciple is saying, with all ecstasy, by your bestowal of gracious glance, when you bestowed that gracious glance towards me, that Guru Kataksha looked upon me with your full radiance and that drushtipata or with drushti diksha is called all my afflictions about the samsara vanished all my desires about the samsara vanished all my vasanas about clinging to the samsara vanished it removed so your glance your guru kataksha your when you bestowed your eyesight towards me, when you looked upon towards me with that grace, with that radiance, with that anugraha, it was like the soothing rays of the night moon which pacify the mind, which soothes the mind. So just like the moon rays, just like the moon rays, your glance made me to get away, come out of the afflictions of samsara, come out of the bondage of samsara itself. Yet kataksha shashi sandra chandrika pata dhuta bhavata pajashamaha raptavan aham akhanda vaibhavananda atma padam akshayam kshanat. So in no time, because of the your glance, your mercy-filled glance, your Guru Kataksha, I came out of this Bhava Bandana. I came out of this Samsara by cutting the Maya itself. I became liberated. I became realized. In a flash, I have acquired the supreme state of Atman, which is nothing but the nature of infinite bliss. Because of your grace, your graceful glance, I attained this state of Atman, this Atma Sakshatara, by cutting the samsara, by cutting the bondage, I entered into this ocean of bliss. Now I am full of bliss. So in Vedanta, this is called as Dhatu Prasad or Anugraha of the Sadguru. The grace, Krupa of Sadguru. So, as I said earlier in this talk today, 
ultimately it is the grace of the lord almighty ishwara whatever sadguru by the grace of sadguru it happens the invisible invisible unmanifest indescribable that hirakar para brahma cannot reach you cannot talk to you like any other human being so in the form of a sadguru by utilizing the antakarana and the indriyas of the sadguru the para brahma will grace ishvara will grace so the true sadguru through the vaani of the sadguru through the shri mukha of the sadguru when the upadesha like a ambrosia falls in into our ears and when i become ready myself because of the purva janma punya phala i receive that grace of the guru in other words paramatma himself and that will pay the way for my subsequent atma sakshatara in this life in this world itself so here guru kataksha is always very important all mahatmas watch for that only by dhatu prasade only by the grace of the guru or god ultimately realization occurs ultimately enlightenment occurs. that is what the disciple is talking here very clear then he continues the shishya says kanyo ham krutakrut yoham vimuktoham bhavagrahat nityananda swarupoham purnoham padanugrahat acharya bhagavad pada writes the key words in this shloka so so the words of the enlightened disciple who is pouring out acharya writes here this shloka where last word please last word remember key word in this shloka tanyoham krutakrutyoham vimuktoham bhavagraha nityananda swarupoham purnoham vadanugraha key word vadanugraha tvat anugraha only by your grace guru varya hey sadguru only by your grace tvadanugraha ಅನುಗ್ರಹ ಕೇವಲ ನಿನ್ನ ಅನುಗ್ರಹದಿಂದ ಕೇವಲ ನಿನ್ನ ಕೃಪೆಯಿಂದ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಜ್ಞಾನಿಗಳಲ್ಲೇ ಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠನಾಗಿರತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಆತ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನ ಸಂಪನ್ನನಾದ ಸದ್ಗುರುವಿಗೆ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾನೆ ಏ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಕೇವಲ ನಿನ್ನ ಅನುಗ್ರಹದಿಂದ ಅನುಗ್ರಹ ಮಾತ್ರದಿಂದ ನಿನ್ನ ಅನುಗ್ರಹ ಪೂರಿತ ಕಟಾಕ್ಷ ವೀಕ್ಷಣೆಯಿಂದ ನಾನು ಧನ್ಯನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಕೃತಕೃತ್ಯನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಈ ಸಂಸಾರ ಬಂಧನದಿಂದ ವಿಮುಕ್ತನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ನಾನು ಸ್ವತಃ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಸ್ವರೂಪನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ನಾನು ಪರಿಪೂರ್ಣನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಅಂದರೆ ಇನ್ನು ಮಾಡಬೇಕಾದ್ದು ಏನೂ ಇಲ್ಲ ಗಳಿಸಬೇಕಾದ್ದು ಏನೂ ಇಲ್ಲ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತಿಯಾಗಬೇಕಾದ್ದು ಏನು ಏನು ಬೇಕೋ ಎಲ್ಲವೂ ತಾನೇ ತಾನಾಗಿ ಏನಾಗಬೇಕೋ ತಾನೇ ತಾನಾಗಿ ಆಗಿದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಇನ್ನು ಆಗುವಂಥದ್ದು ಬೇಕಾಗುವಂಥದ್ದು ಯಾವುದೂ ಇಲ್ವಲ್ಲ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಕೃತಕೃತ್ಯ ಅಂತ ನಾನು ಕೃತಕೃತ್ಯನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ನಾನು ಸಂಪೂರ್ಣವಾಗಿ ಸಂಸಾರ ಬಂಧನದಿಂದ ಬಿಡುಗಡೆ ಹೊಂದಿದ್ದೇನೆ ನಾನೇ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಆತ್ಮಾನಂದ ಸ್ವರೂಪನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಸ್ವರೂಪನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಎಲ್ಲವೂ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಅನುಗ್ರಹ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಕರುಣೆಯಿಂದ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಅನುಗ್ರಹದಿಂದ ತದ ತದ್ ಅನುಗ್ರಹ ಧನ್ಯೋಹಂ ಅಹಂ ಧನ್ಯ ಕೃತಕೃತ್ಯೋಹಂ ಅಹಂ ಕೃತಕೃತ್ಯ ವಿಮುಕ್ತೋಹಂ ಅಹಂ ವಿಮುಕ್ತ ಅವಗ್ರಹ ಅವಗ್ರಹ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಬಾಂಡೇಜ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಮ್ ಔಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಸಂಸಾರ ಕ್ಲಚಸ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಮ್ ಔಟ್ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಅಹಂ ಪೂರ್ಣೋಹಂ ಅಹಂ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಅಹಂ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಪದನುಗ್ರಹ ಐ ಇವರ್ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಅನುಗ್ರಹ ಬೈ ಯುವರ್ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಫಿಲ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಮರ್ಸಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯಾಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಲವ್ 
unconditional love you have blessed me with total mercy you have blessed me with the total compassion in this birth you have blessed me hey guruvarya because of that what anugraha because of that because of that now i am highly blessed aham dhanya tanyoham i am highly blessed i am really blessed i have i have attained this primary purpose of the life i have attained this purushartha what a man should what a human being should after taking birth from the mother's womb has to ultimately reach that final purpose that purushartha i have attained i have attained that because of you because of your glance because of your anugraha nityananda swarupa aham aham nityananda swarupa so i have become myself i have become myself ocean of bliss eternal permanent all the time existing all the time remaining without change okay. ocean of bliss i have become myself purnoham i have become full i am the in totality purna means in totality i am totally full i am the only one of the total final infinite plenary existence there is no other one there is no second so i am purna aham purna purnoham tad anugraha only by your grace by your grace by your grace असंगोहम अनंगोहम अलिंगोहम अभंगुर असंगोहम अनंगोहम अलिंगोहम अभंगुर प्रशातोहम अनंतोहम अमलोहम चिंतन प्रशातोहम अनंतोहम अमलोहम चिंतन गुरुवर्य ನಿಮ್ಮ ಕರುಣಾಪೂರಿತ ದೃಷ್ಟಿಯಿಂದ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಅನುಗ್ರಹ ಕಟಾಕ್ಷದಿಂದ ಏನಾಗಿದೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಈಗ ನಾನು ಅಸಂಗನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಸಂಘರಹಿತನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ನಾನು ಸ್ಥೂಲ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮ ಶರೀರ ರಹಿತನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಲಿಂಗ ಶರೀರ ರಹಿತನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ನಾನು ಸ್ಥೂಲ ಶರೀರಿಯೂ ಅಲ್ಲ ಲಿಂಗ ಶರೀರಿಯೂ ಅಲ್ಲ ಕಾರಣ ಶರೀರಿಯೂ ಅಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ನಾಶರಹಿತನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಅಜ ಅಮರನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ನನಗೆ ಹುಟ್ಟು ಇಲ್ಲ ಸಾವು ಇಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ಪ್ರಶಾಂತನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ನಾನು ಅನಂತನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಎಲ್ಲೇ ಇಲ್ಲದ ಮೇರೆ ಇಲ್ಲದಂತಹ ಸೀಮಾತೀತನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ನಾನು ಪರಿಶುದ್ಧನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ನಾನು ಸನಾತನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಸದಾಕಾಲ ಸದಾಕಾಲ ಇರತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಆ ಒಂದೇ ಒಂದು ವಸ್ತು ಆ ವಸ್ತುವೇ ನಾನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಆ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಸ್ತುವೇ ನಾನಾಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಎಲ್ಲದಕ್ಕೂ ನಿಮ್ಮ ದಯೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಅನುಗ್ರಹ So, asangoham anangoham alingoham abhanguraha prashantoham anantoham amaloham chirantanaha asangaham i am now totally unattached all the while in the samsara i was attached i was having this concept from the birth throughout my waking state also in the dream state i was having the concept of me and mine me and mine this ahankara and mamakara they were always living together like a shadow without my knowledge they were deeply imprinted they were with me all the time as a inseparable unit ahankara and mamakara so this this attachment was there the passion was there this my identity towards my physical body always was there now i am beyond asanga now i am no more attached i am unattached anangaha i am disembodied i am not the body part i am not the body i am not this body anymore i am not these organs anymore i am not this physical organs anymore i am not even the internal component anymore i am not even the antakarana anymore i am not even the mind i am not even the ego i am not even the chitta i am not even the buddhi i am not even the prana 
So, Alingaha. I am disembodied, not this body mind complex anymore. Prashantaha. I do not perish. I am always still. I am totally at peace. Anantaha. I am infinite. My existence cannot be measured. I am boundless. Totally. I am free from weariness or tiredness or fatigue. Amala. Amala. I am free from any fatigue or I am free from any impurity. Amala. Anantaha. Chirantanaha. I am always eternally present. Shashvata. I am eternal. Chirantana means Shashvata. There is no birth. There is no death. There is no change. I remain as it is in the pristine forum. As it is. All the time. All the time. There is no time factor at all. There is nothing like past, present and future. I am beyond that time factor. I am always present. Eternally present. Without any change. Without birth and death. I am always present. That is Chirantana. Aham Chirantana. Asangoham, Anangoham, Alingoham, Abhanguraha, Shantoham, Anantoham, Amaloham, Chirantanaha. So the disciple is pouring out all the feelings in the form of words. The Paravak, most subtlest invisible, that feeling, the thought of realization experience of the realization, the magnanimity of the realization from the Nabhi, from the Manipur Chakra, Madhyama converted, and then into Pashyanti in the Kanta Pradesha and then through the mouth in the form of Vaikhari, the purest of the pure feelings of joy coming out from the mouth of realized So, with the Guru Sankalpa, it stop here. We are stopping at the shloka number 488. Sri Rama Jaya Jaya Rama Sri Rama Jaya Rama and the touch of Guru's grace, uh, it went well. We were a little skeptical as to how it would go, um, but it went very well. Thank you, sir. My backache is there today, severe. That was another reason I told you. I didn't tell you in the beginning. <laughs> I didn't tell you in the beginning. Thank you. Ariyo, all Ariyo. the grace of the Guru. Dhaniwa. Ariyo. Adiós.